Hello, you're Martin van Cronendonk, and you're a professor in geology at the University of New South Wales in Australia. That's right, yeah. Nice thank to be you here. For, yeah, thank you for accepting this interview. Uh, can you quickly describe your career path and what you're currently working on, please? Yeah, sure. So I went through the, the whole normal thing of going to university after uh, graduating from high school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but mm -hmm. uh, in first year I took a, an extra course in geology and had a very good professor and he just uh, made it come alive. And that combination and uh, a friend of my brother's was working out in the Canadian wilderness line, laying lines for geophysics. and told me these stories about camping outdoors and meeting moose in the bush and bears and everything and I said that's for me. Uh, so the combination of things just sort of really sparked my interest and uh -huh. uh, I guess I got lucky too. I found a, a job right after my first year. I think one course in geology I got yeah. a, a job. I sent out 270 resumes in my first year to every company that worked in the west coast of Canada and in the Yukon because I wanted to go to the mountains. Okay. And, uh, I ended up getting a job from funnily enough from a man who used to live in the house where me and my mother moved into <laughs> okay. and I wrote the resume with my home address on it and he couldn't believe it he thought I was just trying to suck up to him and get yeah, this job and I had no idea <laughs> so he, 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 uh, he called me up for an interview in Toronto and he said so do you know who I am and I went uh, no like I, I know you're the yeah. president of this company and yeah. I, I just thought oh I'm really blowing it. I should know this guy's famous and he's, you know. Oh. And he said, so you really don't know who I am? And I went, no. And he asked me this question. He said, is that big block of quartz still on the front step of the house? And I looked at him and it was, of course. This is, and he said, yeah, I grew up in that house. Oh, and I couldn't gosh. believe it. So that's how I got my first job in geology. And that sort of has, has just gone from there. Wow. wow. So I did, uh, I did my undergrad and, and a master's degree in Toronto, where mm -hmm. I was born, mm -hmm. and then uh, moved just down the road to Queen's University, which was the best school in Canada for working on old rocks, not Precambrian rocks. Okay. And uh, I, uh, I kind of, I found out I knew what I wanted to do. I, I found my own project for a PhD, because uh, I'd heard a talk about a place up in Labrador, okay. in northeastern Canada, again, mm -hmm. really remote and wild with polar bears. and. Again, I think it's been more Something the place. Like. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's almost been the places more than the the geology. Although, it's, of course, it's combined. So uh, I did that, and then I, I was working with the Geological Survey of Canada, and uh, they hired me as a postdoc for three years. Okay. And then in 1990, I came down to a conference on Archean geology in Perth, in Western Australia, and I'd done a project in my fourth year of undergrad on. The Pilbara, and, okay. and the names and the places just got under my skin, and uh, oh. I just wanted to see it. So I, I met a guy at that conference, and we set up a project, and I got a scholarship, and I moved down to Australia, and I've been in Australia ever since. Okay, yeah. I see. So what do you work on now? Well, at the uh, Geological Survey, I was a mapping geologist, mm -hmm. and uh, I worked there for 14 years, all through Western Australia, making detailed geological maps of big areas of Archean crust of early Precambrian crust, and uh, ended up reconstructing entire continental histories for you know 800 million years right through the Archean, and uh, okay. also started working on early life. One of the first places that I mapped when I was in the Pilbara has got the oldest fossils in the world, uh, famous stromatolites from North Pole Dome at three and a half billion years old. Wow, that's and uh, a few people had worked there before, but. Doing the regional mapping just helped me put together mm -hmm. a lot of things that hadn't been noticed before. So I mm -hmm. started writing about that and getting people up into the field and working on problems associated with that. And that took me in a, another direction. It sort of added a second mm. uh, flavor to what I've been doing, which was Indeed. basically tectonics. Um, okay. So I continue with those kinds of things. I write about Archean tectonics and about early life. Mm -hmm. And then more recently, I've gotten involved with uh, the Precambrian time scale. Okay. I was uh, nominated to be the chair of the Precambrian Subcommission of the International Commission on Stratigraphy. Long words, but yes. basically it's the formal body that decides about dividing geological time. Okay. And they were tasked a few years ago by the IUGS to really refine and revamp the time scale and make the Precambrian more like the way the Phanerozoic is divided, based on actual rock sequences. Because mm. at the moment it's just actually average numbers and it works pretty well, but 
we know so much more than when that was set up, you know, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so part of my work now, and, and really one of my strong passions is, is having investigated the Precambrian history, is trying to identify successions in the rock record where very rapid global changes have occurred. Mm -hmm. And then using that to define a boundary in the time scale and say, this is characterized by, let's say, glaciations like the Snowball Earth. And, uh, there's another event at 2.4, which is widespread glaciations, and then first life and oldest rocks, and there are a number of things in the time scale that you can use to uh, to denote these these boundaries. Okay. And um, that was one of the main reasons that I've just recently moved to a university is to uh, be able to pursue that a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. So, what do you find most exciting about your career? To the bears? <laughs> uh, yeah, the bears is, is a, well, it was a big component. There yeah. aren't so many bears in Australia. But, uh, um, no, I think, like anything, it's, uh, it's new discoveries and, uh, and solving problems, you know, that other people haven't been able to solve or haven't realized were there. Mm -hmm. uh, and just that excitement of discovery. And, of course, that has to be with other people. It's never just a, a solo thing. And, and part of it is, is sharing that adventure with mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people who become good colleagues and friends and, uh, yeah. and with students. But um, definitely, I think it's that, uh, yeah, it's just that pursuit of interest. Like, I, I wanted to know how the earth works. Right? Okay. I think yeah. as a kid, I'd gone camping a lot. and. I, you know, I looked at birds and yes. did all sorts of things outdoors. And uh, then with that introduction into geology, that was a real way of trying to understand a little bit about the Earth. And so when you're okay. mapping and you get into a complex area and then you figure out what's happening, it, it's really exciting. Yes. Yeah. Wow. If you had another lifetime, what would you do? Well, I guess I would uh, uh, probably do a lot of the same that I have been doing. Um, but maybe instead of going through the pain of writing grant applications all the time, is, is <laughs> concentrate on making a lot of money early, yeah. <laughs> and then being able to set up so that there's uh, you know yes. the freedom to really pursue your interests. Yes. And, uh, yeah. You know everybody has dreams of, of what they'd love to do, mm -hmm. and uh, you know finding the pathways of how to pursue that is, mm -hmm. is part of the challenge of making a career. But it's also very rewarding when those mm -hmm. things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this year, you've received the EHE Eminent Speaker Distinction. What does it mean to you? Well, I don't know how that happened, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really uh, think of myself as a geochemist, but I, I've done a lot of projects that include geochemistry. Yes. And, um, you know, it's a very important tool in terms of figuring out how things work or, or what, const you know, it's placing constraints on possibilities, mm -hmm. along with many other tool sets. And, uh, so for me, actually, geochemistry has been something I've learned more about recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, mostly through the better expertise of colleagues who have helped me to understand what it means. And so, uh, so this Eminent Speaker Award is actually very satisfying because it's not something I'm naturally trained in. Mm -hmm. And it shows that I've been able to um, you know, adopt something mm -hmm. and use it in a way that people can access and understand. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's one of my strengths, is being able to present information in a way that's uh, understandable. Mm -hmm. And geochemistry is often very complex, and I'm mm -hmm. not very good at it, so I simplify, simplify, simplify. <laughs> and uh, you know that can be dangerous and, and bad yeah. in lots of ways. But on the other hand, it uh, is really trying to pick out the important part of the story yes. and uh, integrate it with other things. And, and actually, that's what first really got me into uh, the kind of geology I do is I saw a, a talk by a, a lecturer and he was able to put together all these different things, geochemistry, geochronology, good mapping, uh, all sorts of things. And I just thought, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to put together lots of different things yes. and apply them to specific topics. So okay. like with the, with the early life stories, we've yeah. applied geochemistry to that and morphology and isotopes and organic geochemistry and like everything goes into it. And you it. need all this. And yeah. you need those. So yeah. in some ways, part of the field that I've gotten into is called astrobiology, which is, mm. you know, trying to understand life on Earth better and then apply mm. that to how you might search for life on other planets. Mm. And it's been a fantastic challenge because it actually forces you to bridge a lot of what had been disciplines earlier mm. and break those barriers down and find mm. people that you can talk about with something that you may not have very much knowledge about at all. Yeah. And I think that's very good for science. It's opening up whole new frontiers of understanding. Yes. So, origin of life studies and 
you know, yeah. paleontology and chemistry and geochemistry. So yeah. that's really the way that, um, that the field is going and to be part of that is, is quite exciting. Okay. As a last question, would you have any advice for junior researchers? Well, I mean, my path was really forged not in any way really by thinking consciously. And I, I've had this, this discussion with other people, you know, they come and say, oh, what should I do for a career? Yes. So, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who you are or what you love to do. I think you have to really follow what you love to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of the whole experience of, of um, mm -hmm. growing up and going through school and to university is just trying all these different things. And mm -hmm. when you find something that really connects with you, mm -hmm. you know. You don't have to think about it, it just is, mm -hmm. because that's what you love to do. Mm. And that's really where you find your niche, because okay. you don't work at it, it becomes, it's just a natural thing. Mm. So, I knew I wanted to go to the west coast of Canada, I'd never been there before and worked there, so, you know, yeah. and, and, and things fall out of uh, occasions where people are genuinely passionate and interested, mm -hmm. then everybody is welcome to have you on board, right? It's just a pleasure. Mm. And uh, I think just being natural, being yourself, and pursuing the, the things you love to do is what it's all about. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, Martin. Pleasure. Yeah, thank thanks you. for the invite.